Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Media Gemini TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. Hi everyone, welcome back to Azeng News and here is the latest news for today. Survivor recalls Indonesia Semeru eruption. Lumajang residents recalled the moment Indonesia Semeru volcano erupted, leaving their village buried in a deep layer of ash. In a barren landscape covered in ash, homes were almost completely submerged and a truck had only the top of the driver's cap visible. At first, I thought it was a bomb explosion, and all of a sudden, it was Semeru erupted and spewing volcanic ashes. Suddenly, it was all dark, like it was going to destroy the earth. My children were scattered around, my husband was not around, and I was waiting for him. Then we evacuated ourselves to the evacuation camp. Mengungsi di balai desa ini. The Disaster Mitigation Agency (BNPB) said eruption of Indonesia's Semeru volcano has killed at least 14 people and injured dozens. As search teams looked for victims. <laughs> It was less than 10 minutes while I was running away. I heard that my home was buried in the lava and only the roof was left. I had around 10 livestock that were also buried by lava, but I feel lucky that my family and I are safe now because the lava came all of a sudden. In addition, the state secretary said President Joko Widodo has ordered authorities to find and treat victims. Bapak Presiden sudah memerintahkan kepada Kepala BNPB. The President has given instructions to the Chiefs of the Disaster Mitigation Agency, Search and Rescue, Social Minister, Health Minister, Public Works Minister, also Military Chief, Police Chief, and governor to take action immediately, to search and find casualties, to treat those injured and to handle the impact of disaster. perawatan kepada korban yang luka-luka dan melakukan penanganan dampak bencana. Semeru is the tallest mountain on Java Island, threw up with towers of ash and hot clouds that blanketed nearby villages in East Java province and sent people fleeing in panic. Malaysia court upholds guilty verdict for former Prime Minister Najib. Malaysia court will deliver its verdict in appeal field by former Premier Najib Razak over his conviction in a corruption case related to state fund One Malaysia Development Berhard. Najib was found guilty on criminal breach of trust, abuse of power and money laundering for illegally receiving about 10 million from SRC International, a former unit of now defunct One Malaysia Development, Berhard. I accept the verdict of the people. Najib had appealed the verdict and is out on bail. He has consistently denied wrongdoing, has not ruled out seeking re-election to parliament on interview with Reuters in September. To qualify, he would first need to have his conviction overturned. Uh, I was not, didn't have any knowledge whatsoever of monies coming in. I would not have condoned and allowed it if I knew.
opposition lawmakers are concerned graph allegations against Najib and several members of his United Malaysian National Organization Anmal Party could be dropped with Anmal now back in power. Indonesia volcano which killed 14 erupts twice in morning. Eyewitness video showed Indonesia's Samir volcano erupting two times following an eruption over the weekend which killed 14 people. The tallest mountain on the island of Java erupted dramatically shooting a towering column of ash into the sky that blanketed surrounding villages and more than 50 people had suffered injuries from the eruption, mostly burns. The eyewitness told Reuters that the eruptions were recorded at 8.38 a.m. local time and 8.57 a.m. consecutively. Therefore, heavy rain and wind temporarily halted rescue efforts as officials urged residents to be vigilant because the danger had not passed. Semeru is one of more than 100 active volcanoes in Indonesia, a country that straddles the Pacific Rim of Fire, an area of high seismic activity that rests atop multiple tectonic plates. Myanmar's military appointed foreign minister holds talk with Cambodian prime minister. Myanmar's military appointed foreign minister Wu Namong Luing held talks in Cambodia day after the junta drew global condemnation for sentencing the post leader Aung San Suu Kyi to jail for incitement and breaching COVID-19 rules. Wu Namong Ong met Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Sen at the Peace Palace in Phnom Penh with the men tapping elbows in a greeting before talk. <laughs> Cambodia will be the chair of the 10-member ASEAN meeting next year, a bloc that includes Myanmar. ASEAN has seen divisions emerge between members over its diplomatic efforts to resolve the crisis in Myanmar since which its government was overthrown. <laughs> Myanmar's military leader Min Oh Leng was not invited to the annual summit of group leaders that hosted by Brunei, but Hun Sen said junta officials should be invited to the bloc's meetings. Hun Sen has over the years faced criticism from the right groups and Western governments over what they see as his suppression over democracy and planned to visit Myanmar for talks with its military rulers. Children in the Philippines capital returned to school for the first time in nearly two years. Children aged between 6 to 9 years old in the Philippines capital of Manila returned to school for the first time after nearly two years of online classes as part of pilot scheme to resume face-to-face -face learning after the pandemic disrupted the education of 27 million students. Inside the classrooms, desks filled with the plastic barriers were spaced over one meter apart and classes were limited to a maximum of 15 students to ensure social distancing rules. Students and teachers were also required to wear face masks during the half-day classes. It's a much better way to conduct classes face-to-face -face because that way we can closely monitor students when it comes to what we teach them and what we ask them to do, we can easily address problems, especially in reading and writing. A total of 100 public schools in lower risk areas across the Philippines are holding classes in person for the two-month pilot run with reopening of more dependent on vaccination rates and sustained decline in COVID-19 cases. I feel scared since there is still COVID, but we have to brave it so much children can learn. I can't focus on helping with her studies and her modules because I also have work. The Philippines had imposed some of the world's longest lockdowns, is among the last countries to reopen schools in stark contrast to many Western countries. Cambodian Prime Minister says Myanmar Junta has right to attend ASEAN meetings. Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Sen said he plans to visit Myanmar for talks with its military rulers and junta officials should be invited to the meetings of ASEAN. 
Myanmar's standing as a member of the 10 country ASEAN has been thrown into the spotlight with its military junta leader Min Oh Lein, who was not invited to the annual summit of group leaders that hosted by Brunei after members failed to reach a consensus. <laughs> We do not compare the rulers in Apitiao, Ming Ohleng, to the Taliban in Afghanistan. It's a family member of ASEAN. They must have the right to attend meetings. It was strange that the foreign minister of Myanmar wasn't allowed to attend. But Hun Sen suggested while Cambodia is the host of the regional bloc for the next year, all 10 members would be represented. This is the time to re-strengthen ASEAN. There were 10 attending members, it became 9, and now it's need to go back to 10. Myanmar has never walked away from ASEAN and under the ASEAN Charter, no one has the right to expel another member. It's a family member of ASEAN. They must have the rights to attend meetings during an inauguration ceremony for a Chinese-funded construction project. There is strong possibility I'll visit Napitiao to meet General Ming Holeng to work with him. If I don't work with the leadership, whom can I work with? <laughs> Myanmar has been in crisis since Ming Holeng overthrew a civilian government led by Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi on a military coup. Thailand detects first case of Omicron. Thailand has detected its first case of the Omicron coronavirus variant in a U.S. citizen who had traveled the country from Spain. We believe that we've detected the first confirmed case of Omicron variant in Thailand. The person traveled from Spain. The confirmed case in the man who arrived on November makes Thailand the 47th country who have found the new variant and official adding that patient had mild symptoms. However, there is no need to panic over this. We already know that it is inevitable. We will have to intensify various measures to prevent the worst scenario. Thailand reported 4,000 new coronavirus cases and 22 new deaths, taking the tally more than 2.1 million cases and 20,966 deaths since the pandemic started last year. China and Cambodia pledged to promote bilateral ties. China and Cambodia have pledged to implement the important consensus reached by the leaders of the two countries and promote the bilateral ties and deepen pragmatic cooperation. Chinese State Councillor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi held talks with Cambodian Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Prak Sok Hong in Anji, East China Zhejiang Province. Wang said, in face of the COVID-19 pandemic and changes unseen in a century, China and Cambodia should be more closely united. To greater progress at the new starting point, both sides should jointly implement the important consensus reached by the two heads of states and promote China's relation with Cambodia and ASEAN. Sokon appreciated China for supporting Cambodia in the fight against the COVID-19 epidemic. Cambodia touches great importance and supports the Global Development Initiative and a Global Data Security Initiative proposed by China. Sokon said Cambodia wishes China will successful with Beijing 2022 Winter Olympic Games and is willing to deepen the pragmatic cooperation between the two countries. The two sides also exchanged views on jointly advancing China-ASEAN relations. Young residents beat on pots and protest against brutal crackdown. Young residents reached for pots and pens to protest from their homes against the brutal crackdown by coup soldiers over peaceful gatherings. Local news portal Myanmar now reported five people were killed and at least 15 arrested after Myanmar security forces in a car ramped into an anti-coup protest in Yangon and witnesses at the scene told traitors dozens had been injured. <laughs> a 
anti-military protests are continuing despite killing of more than 1,300 people. The scattered protests are often small groups voicing opposition to the overthrow of an elected government led by Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi and the return of the military rule. The opposition's shadow government says it was heartbroken to see peaceful protesters crashed and shot to death. A spokesman for the ruling junta did not answer her calls. First coal chain train launched on China Laos Railway. A train carrying 33 refrigerated containers left Kunming, capital of southwest China's Yunnan province. It is the first train involved in a cold chain logistic on the 1,035-kilometer China Laos Railway, a landmark project of high-quality belt and road cooperation. The train loaded with Yunnan specialty vegetables is expected to arrive in Laos capital, Vientiane. According to the land port, specialty products of Laos and Thailand will be delivered at the Kunmin Tengjung International Land Port, which will further to be transported to cities like Shanghai, Guangzhou and Beijing. The land port has established service networks in Laos and Thailand, providing comprehensive services such as domestic and overseas cargo collection, warehousing, cross-border logistics, custom clearance, transportation and delivery for the export of Chinese cargo and the import of Laos and Thai cargo. The China Laos Railway connects Kunmin in southwest China's Yunnan province with the Laos capital Vientiane. It is the first overseas railway jointly constructed and operated by the two countries, adopting Chinese standards and directly linking to China's railway network. And that's the whole news for today, folks. Stay safe, stay healthy, have a lovely weekend.